Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to spend a little bit of time talking about Ubuntu 23.10. And we want to chat a little bit about just some of the things that we have talked about, some of the predictions leading up and where they are. And yeah, I'm doing this video a few weeks after the actual release. And the reason is I wanted to wait for the bugs to come out, for the changes to be done and just to see what the status is. And I'll say at the very front, this was one of the first predictions about Ubuntu I actually didn't get right uh, regarding the repository software in the new Snap Store. We'll get to that in a moment. Before we do, let's go ahead and talk briefly about Ubuntu, particularly if you're new to Linux, you're investigating things. Somebody might have said, hey, go look at Ubuntu. If you're you know, frustrated with Windows 11, you're like, no more ads! And uh, you start looking up Linux and you realize that most people have classically came to Linux through Ubuntu. And in the past, that was very true. And in the past, Ubuntu was a very good leader in Linux. The unfortunate thing is they have lost their way a little bit in pushing some things that a few people didn't appreciate and causing a few issues that, um, that were more controversial. And so right now, while a good number of people do still learn about Linux through Ubuntu, in my opinion, in the opinion of people that switch to Linux to get away from the corporate nonsense, Ubuntu is not the place you want to go to. It doesn't feel a lot different. It does not have as good of an experience as you would have on like a Windows as far as uh, how snappy the system is. Well, I don't know. It depends on your system, of course. Because Ubuntu has made a lot of changes that even on this system, on an SSD, on a Ryzen 5, it feels sluggish. The reason for that is because they are doing a fundamental change with how Linux packages are, uh, are managed and is doing everything in Snap so much. There's all sorts of weird high energy Snap stuff going on behind the scenes. Now, a number of people that are switching to Linux specifically for the better developer experience don't care about such things uh, as far as the corporate uh, items go. And so jumping to Ubuntu does make a lot of sense because it carries with it that familiarity. But about half of the people that switch to Linux, and if you're investigating this because you're just sick of the nonsense Windows is doing, you're probably trying to get away from that kind of stuff. And so a Linux Mint or an MX Linux or uh, a variety of different Linux distributions might be a better choice. But Ubuntu does still carry around a lot of weight for better or for worse. And so we have to examine what it's doing. Now, before we jump into the actual distribution itself, uh, I can say that my biggest initial concern for the system was that we were going to see a situation where it's pushing snaps so much it becomes much harder to install repository software. Uh, is that true? Well, the reality is uh, portions of it, yes. Uh, as of right now, you still cannot easily install a deb file. You'd still have to use a terminal um, commands to do that. And uh, that in and of itself raises a few concerns. But uh, without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump on over to Ubuntu and see what we are looking at. So here is our login screen, and uh, this is running GDM as the login manager. Of course, we can still come down here and we can choose Ubuntu uh, with no suffix after it is Wayland. This is if we want to run everything on X. Uh, if you're unsure, just stay where you are for now. There are a few applications that you would need to run X on, but uh, we're not going to worry about that at this point in time. So once we get logged in, uh, one of the great new things about this is on the install, you can choose whether you want your system to be uh, a light mode or a dark mode. So I went with the dark mode uh, and that just it just makes it a little bit easier to look at for the eyes for the purpose of the video rather than having a lot of bright uh, brightness going around. That's, these are things that we can change. Uh, you know, there you go. There's your. Um, there's your, your light. Let me pull up in the file manager, just get a, so you get a chance to see some of the things. And let's also pull up in the settings manager. 
Uh, so if we go ahead and do this and we go back to the dark style, you can see that's why we're running the dark style today. And it does change the wallpapers and things like that. Ubuntu now, of course, does have, uh, based on the newer GNOME, does have a, a built-in uh, screen recorder. So that's actually really nice video, uh, single picture. Uh, you can show the pointer, hide the pointer. So that's actually really nice to see those types of tools come in. Oop, sorry, that's my VM there. Uh, and then you, we have other options here. We only have like a power saver and a balanced power. We don't have like a high performance here. Uh, if I happen to have Bluetooth module or a Wi-Fi module, I'd actually have the uh, other toggle uh, built uh, button toggle buttons to turn on or off those various settings as well. It's just this system is I keep it as as limited down as I can, uh, just for simplicity purposes. We'll close that out. Uh, as far as the appearance over here, you can choose your accent colors now. That's definitely awesome. Uh, new features built in. And then as far as our backgrounds, we can choose a variety of backgrounds and some of them will have light and dark mode options as well. Uh, so this is the one we're running right now. So if you see this one, it'll be um, the left color if you are on a light mode and the right color if you're on dark mode. Same with this guy over here and this guy over here. So we have some changes to those. As far as our desktop icons themselves, uh, we can choose the various size. We want our icons to be big, normal, small. Uh, and then where do you want the position at? I have no earthly idea why in the world Ubuntu is putting new icons on the bottom right. I just, it doesn't make sense to me. But okay, whatever. And then you can show or hide your personal folder. As far as your dock, you can auto hide it. We can set it in panel mode or we can set it as like a, uh, just like a, a little pill mode there. And then we can change our icon size. I do think the default icon is a little bit too big, so that's a little bit nicer. You can show on all displays or just the primary, and there's a few other things here. Here's tiling pop-up, tile groups, things like that. Most of the other items are, are fairly self-explanatory inside of the settings panel itself. Uh, of course, here is the control center for the various apps. You can choose what shows up in search and notifications and things like that. And here's about the system itself. We're at Ubuntu 23.10. And here's the hardware model. We have the AMD Ryzen 5 1600. Um, the, I've given this guy six gigs of memory. And let's see what else we have. Do we have the kernel in there? There it is. Uh, 6.5 kernel virtualization is KVM with Way Wayland. So I am going to say out front here as well, I had issues getting this installed on VirtualBox. So we're running this one on GNOME boxes. And uh, VirtualBox, it was uh, it was just the issue that the installer just kept crashing. And so I jumped over. Part of that possibly is that it forced me to, well, it didn't force me. It asked me, would you like to install the new, uh, update the new installer? And it, uh, I did that, and the installer kept crashing. So I just went ahead and tried this with GNOME boxes. I didn't try it again in Virtual Machine without, uh, without updating the installer, but I did run the install without updating it in GNOME boxes. So if you're testing this out in virtualization, that's a little bit of the fight I had to do to get this moving. I did run the new default, which is the minimal. So all we have is just the basic Ubuntu tools and not much else. Um, beautiful icons we're getting there. Can I get those icons back? Okay, I don't know why I'm not getting the icons back here, but uh, the utilities apparently are not showing up right. Advanced disk usage. So there's a little bug I'm having with the system. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we have a clock, calendar, settings. You can see there's almost nothing installed over here. There it goes. Now we got it. Uh, here's our advanced network configuration, disk usage, disks, things like that. So really no software uh, installed by default. Uh, we do have um, Firefox. We do have files. We do have the App Center. We do have Help. So it almost looks like if they're if they're not on, let's unpin that. Okay, so pinning it removes it from your list of software over here and exclusively puts it on the panel. That's good to know. We have a web browser, and that's about it. 
So the big concern I have and where I really want to spend a little bit of time here is the software because we do have a brand new software installer. This is the first full release of Ubuntu that has this new software installer. Uh, this is based on, ooh, was it based on Flutter? I forget. I, sorry, I completely forget what they base this new system on. Uh, as far as management, you can see that uh, it is giving us updates. It's telling us what uh, what updates we have available. We have a Snap Store update. Um, uh, we have, oh, it looks like Firefox is the only update, it looks like. Um, we also, though, have the ability to explore, see what is in here. Here's our featured software. And then you can go into various different applications. Now, uh, as I said when we first saw the store, I actually really like the layout of the store. I think it's snappy and it's very responsive. So this is really, in my opinion, a, a good approach uh, the, the new store. Now the concern that we had is, are you going to be able to get repository software? And on the original release, when 2310 first came out, the answer was no, but that is something that has been corrected. So there's a few applications I always tend to go to. Uh, so here's Audacity. You can see we have the snap packages and we have the Debian packages available for Audacity. Now what we don't have is the ability to come down and choose if I'm on Audacity itself, I don't have the ability to toggle between the snap version and the repository version on this screen. They are treated as two separate applications, but you can see that it will tell us which one is which. Uh, so we do still have the option for the Debian packages and the snap packages. Uh, and then even on the search function, we can search for relevance. Uh, we can toggle between snap and Debian. We can do all categories. So, uh, it does indeed make it a lot easier than many of us were suggesting, even based on the developer saying it is a non-issue to make the Debian packages in the store. Apparently, they got enough pushback against that that, yes, you can install the uh, repository software through the new store. So that is actually good, and that is resolved. What, unfortunately, is not resolved is installing dev files. So I went ahead, and uh, I was thinking about what dev file might we actually have have. Um, I did start looking around at a few things and there are a lot of things that are in the Snap Store. And so uh, the Snap Store is being good in the fact that we can get the software that we need more often than not, even with the disadvantages of a much slower system, because this does not feel nearly as snappy. Uh, I mean, I looked at, okay, Brave. Oh, Brave actually has a snap now. Now, the problem we have is that there is still possibly some not good software in here because they're really trying to push and make sure there's so much software in here that uh, is becoming the problem itself. In fact, if I always go back to my example of Simple Screen Recorder, you can see in Simple Screen Recorder, we have the Debian package. This is the official one. We have an unofficial one, and then we have the Simple Screen Recorder written by this guy who's definitely not a hacker, okay? I mean, that's just, I, mean I say that facetiously, uh, but the problem is, is that if you go to the actual website, the, the developer's page for Simple Screen Recorder, he makes no references to a uh, snap package, yet we have two completely separate snap packages. Neither of them are assembled by any um, uh, official source. So we just don't know. And this is one of the fundamental problems, as we talked about in a recent video about malware in the snap store and why this was a problem. And it looks like that is still the issue that's there. So the software is here. The question is, who is developing the software? In the case of Brave, it is certainly the, the Brave organization. If we want to look at LibreOffice, we can install the full LibreOffice over here, but to get the full LibreOffice package down here, we're going to have to do a few shenanigans if we want to install the whole thing. There's your base. Now, uh, that being said, though, if we look at the Snap package, this is put together by Canonical. I would certainly trust software from the, from the purity of the code perspective. I'm going to trust Canonical to put together the software. That is the company behind Ubuntu, behind the Snap packages themselves. Even though I'm not a fan of Snap packages, um, the fact that uh, the company is putting them together means they're not going to be full of malware. The problem is they didn't think about the fact that... Um, um, dev files are still a thing 
And if you might want to install something like the Malvad browser here, um, uh, or I don't know if this is the B VPN client or the browser. I grabbed something off the Malvad store. <laughs> I wasn't sure which one it was. Um, but it's a dev file, which any Debian-based system should know by default how to manage a .deb file. And it turns out Ubuntu does not. So we would actually have to install something or you just need to go into your D package and run a terminal line, a command line, in order to uh, run a dev file. So there is still a shortcoming with that, and that is uh, uh, certainly the issue. Uh, the other issue, let's see if this has been resolved or not. I have no idea. Okay, maybe, maybe apparently. Um, there, for a long time, the snaps were creating extra entries under your disks because every one of them was mounted as a separate disk file. Apparently that has been resolved, so that's actually good. Although the snappiness of the system is not back. So overall though, um, here's my overall uh, perspective on uh, Ubuntu looking at 23.10. It is still moving in a direction I just cannot get on board with. I do not like the fact that they're pushing a proprietarily distributed snaps on the system and they still have not taken seriously the balance between the snap store and the possibility of getting malware in there because they don't trust the software they trust the developer and they have created a package that becomes way more work than a basic distribution repository to audit because of the massive amounts of dependencies that have to come pre-packaged so uh, in short on the repository, you package the dependencies, and then to package a piece of software, you just need to audit the code, not the dependencies, because you've already looked at them. The problem is every snap package carries with it its own dependencies, and so you'd have to audit those independently. That is an issue. And it means that since Canonical wants the snap store to be big, malware slips in as they try and open it up to allow people to come in and provide more software to people. And so that is the fundamental issue that I have. I do not like the fact that Ubuntu is pushing towards more corporate ends, not towards more privacy or freedom ends. And that is in and of itself a fundamental problem. Because this is based on snaps, even on an SSD, this system is taking a lot longer to load than any other system that I have because of the massive amounts of snaps going on in the background. Um, and that's just... Um, uh, that's just a, a function of, of how many uh, how many snaps there are uh, in the system. Uh, I'm looking at right here. Let me just uh, go back to this for you guys there. Uh, we have notes. We have the bare base. We have the core. We have Firefox. We have a firmware updater. We have all of GNOME. Uh, GDK common themes, you have Snap Store, a Snap D, Snap D desktop integration. All of these various things are going to cause some issues which slow the system down. And so this pushing this whole Snap prepackaged system slows the system down way more than if you had your core portions just over the regular software and just your software were uh, were being snaps. Uh, I can understand that a little bit better, but they're trying to force more core items into this and it's deeply slowing the system down. So uh, with the fact that Ubuntu's desktop is no longer, uh, well, I don't know if it's ever really been super familiar to a new user and with how slow the system is that it doesn't feel snapping responsive, uh, I would probably say Ubuntu is definitely not on my list of first recommended Linux distributions to use uh, for all these different reasons, whereas other systems like a Linux Mint Cinnamon is going to be a lot more user friendly and works a lot snappier out of the box. So those are the, the reasons I wouldn't highly recommend this for a brand new user, but we still have to give Ubuntu a little bit of respect for what it does, the the directions it wants to move, and that's okay as long as it doesn't force those directions on everybody else. And, uh, you know, that's kind of my take on it. Let me know your thoughts about this in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M. -M. 
or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.